That was good. That was good, Kathy. I don't know that that got uh, that, that got broadcast. Because we are live, everyone. It is Reed Mahalka from ReadAboutSex.com. I'm wearing my Sex Geek Summer Camp t-shirt. That means we're talking about business for workshop facilitators and educators of all kinds. And I have the, the great pleasure of hanging out today with Kathy Vartuli of the Intimacy Dojo, who has some fun things to nerd out with you on about common mistakes educators and workshop leaders and teachers and coaches and therapists and whatever common mistakes we make when we are telling story or using story to engage with our audiences kathy vartuli of the intimacy <laughs> dojo what are some of these common mistakes and why is well let's first start off with why is telling story or weaving story into how we teach why is that useful and important i love using story and um I think it's the heart of when we're trying to reach people and sharing our ideas, our marketing, our education, the story is the heart of that, the, the heart of the being of what we're sharing with the world. Because without story, we're not really reaching people's inner sides. We're like, we're teaching their brains, we're teaching their hands how to do stuff, but we're not teaching their being how to do things. And people remember story when they won't remember anything else. They may have forgotten who you are maybe 10 years from now, but they might remember that story and that could carry them through and anchor the information you gave them, anchor the hope that they can get something done. And stories reach us when marketing doesn't. We all have a little bit of a, a, a wall up against the world when people are trying to pitch us stuff all the time. You go through Facebook or whatever, there's ad, ad, ad. But if someone shares a story, it just, it gets right to our, sub, our survival brain. and. We're like, oh, really? We lean in, we let stuff in. So it's a beautiful way to connect with people deeply, quickly, that will carry forward in their lives. So I, I just love using story. Um, mm -hmm. If if I look distracted, it's only because I'm sharing the live uh, to other pages. Um, but it must be, Dr. Vartuli, that a lot of us are making unconscious mistakes uh maybe big mistakes when we're weaving story um into our work what are some of these mistakes maybe perhaps the three biggest that you come across let's pick the three biggest mistakes um the, the first mistake that i see people use a lot is they pick a story that they think will um match whatever they're marketing whatever but they don't pick one that inspires them themselves the person telling the story has to be inspired by that story. Um, and we have to be able to be inspired by it multiple times because we need to tell the story. Reed and I years ago went to a bunch of Brendan Burchard workshops. And every time, you know, it was a 40 workshop, we'd get, he'd get up there and he'd spend 20 to 30 minutes telling the same story, like not quite word for word, but pretty close. And he had to bring it each time. So if it wasn't a story that meant something to him, it, it wouldn't really, impact the audience the same way. If you're not inspired by what you're sharing, dig deeper, figure out a story that will help you really feel inspired and really charged up. Because if you're impacted by it, if you're excited by it, you're gonna make a bigger difference when you share it and people will be able to feel that. And you wanna be able to pick something that you can share over and over again, because you wanna be able to weave it into everything. It becomes part of your brand people recognize you, it helps you stand out and be unique. It adds value to who you are and what you share. Um, what are some of the, I won't get to the other two mistakes, but the, like, why do you think we do that? Why do you think that, that we make that mistake? Um, one, I think a lot of people, traditional marketing and a lot of, they, they say pick a niche, pick something that you think will sell. They don't go from the heart. And one of the things I love about how you teach read, it's always like, go inside first and then figure out how that overlaps with something you can make money with. So, but so much, so much of outside stuff is find out where you can make money and then sell that versus like being internal. And I think it's also really vulnerable. It's hard to find a story that's really inspiring because then we're kind of sharing our, our most vulnerable self with the world. We're sharing something that's really precious to us. And, I, one of the things I love, like you teach conservatory, which is coming up really soon. I love the fact that people are in the safe closed container where they can really dig. I love I'm teaching a story there. Um, and 
I love the space you can create around that where people can really dig down and find their story. There's the story that lights them up, that makes them cry, a story that really impacts their world. And then you let them practice it there. Like, it's just, it's always been really amazing to me what people walk away with from that. Because I think it is hard to sit alone at your desk and say, okay, now I'm gonna be vulnerable. Now I'm gonna really dredge the bottom of my heart and pull out and show the world this thing that I'm, I'm a little bit like, oh, I'm not sure I wanna share that with the world because it's tender. And so being able to share it in a safe, closed container first, I think is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And now what would the second biggest <laughs> mistake be that some of us workshop facilitators and educators make when yes. weaving story into this our This one is so work. important. Um, it's not going dark. So many people in our, yeah, going dark. <laughs> so many people in, <laughs> not quite that dark. Um, no, we want to, we want to share the struggle, the conflict, the, the pain we felt. This is not pain marketing. Pain marketing is saying, I am the only way you can get there. And if you don't do this, you're going to be a complete loser, rubbing it in, telling them they have to follow this. Going dark is different in that I'm sharing the struggle I went through. I'm reminding of the pain they might have numbed out that is already there, not to convince them to buy, but at least to get them awake and aware. And our brain does not remember. It just is not geared to remember love and light and happiness all the time. And I think for a long time, I didn't want to hurt people. I wanted to try to bring them right to the happy parts and offer them the things they would benefit from. But because I didn't go to the dark places, because I didn't share how much I struggled to get the information I had, people didn't relate to me. They didn't feel like I really understood the struggle they were feeling. They didn't feel seen and gotten. So they didn't, they, they just weren't engaged. And our survival brain is geared to look for threats. It's geared to pay attention 10 times more to the dark stuff than to the light and airy. And that's based on a survival brain technique because our if we were going out and there was a tiger and some carrots if we ran over to get the carrots and got eaten we're never going to eat another carrot versus if we say oh tiger really important i'm not going to go out there the next day we can go eat carrots we're up to the tiger and moved on so our brain is just hardwired 10 times more attention goes to the dark the the struggle, the challenge. So if you want to grab people's attention and let them know you've walked in their, in their shoes, you have to be willing to go into the dark, which means you have to be willing to tolerate the discomfort of being there again. Um, I know we talked about, you know, what you'll be teaching at, at Sex Geek Conservatory and I'll throw, I'll throw the link in, um, uh, in the comments where people can just go to sexyconservatory.com, but like you teaching over the weekend, um, the, cause these three mistakes, cause I put you on the spot cause I was looking at your, your worksheets for the weekend and I was like, what are the three biggest mistakes, which was me tricking you into doing a video about it. Um, because whether people come to conservatory to work on their public speaking skills and getting comfortable with microphones and cameras and all the stuff so that we can just reach our audiences more powerfully, but also like with more ease and self-expression. So you can be a more entertaining or edutaining speaker. Mm -hmm. um, the three mistakes weave really well because they build on each other because you have to be comfortable from what I'm hearing uh, to share something uncomfortable about your journey but also pick the story that is inspiring to you. Yes. Like, here's the inspiring thing about my fucked up life. Yes. Um, but then also your third mistake that we make yes. weaves this all together because if you can find a story that is congruent to your journey and you don't have to tell your audiences everything, yes. right? You get to have privacy too, even as a public persona. Um, but you find that story that's inspiring to you able to share how hard the journey was and and how it fucked you up mm. um and then the third mistake that we forget to make is what to offer them hope that they can do it too so if we're vulnerable if we share our struggle and are also like the amazingness of like 
oh, like I didn't, there were moments where I didn't think I'd get this. There were moments where I almost gave up, but then I got it and it felt so amazing. Like, oh, this is what I'd hoped for. This is even more than I hoped for, but going through that process and sharing it, there's specific things we can share. The five senses, our thoughts, um, the feelings we had in our body that really people can, it lets people know, hey, this is real. This is something someone actually went through. They're not just putting words on a piece of paper. Um, that gives them hope that they can do that too. And too many people have been sold false promises time after time again, or haven't been able to come through. They're like, oh, that's for someone else. It's not for me. I'm, I'm the case that no one can solve. But if they resonate with what you're sharing, if they're like, oh my God, I feel that in my body too, or they can feel the truth of your words, that gives them hope. And I think for marketing, I think 95% of what we give people is the hope that there's a different way to do this. Edu you know, we give them education and information, mm -hmm. but we want to also give them the hope that they're not stuck forever. And I think just to share about conservatory, like I used to be one of those people that if I had a talk, I'm an engineer, so if I had a talk that was to five people a week from now, I wouldn't sleep for the week. I would be nervous and agitated and wishing it was over and trying to figure out how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And they literally would take the laser marker, like if we had we're pointing at the board, they would take it from me because my hands would shake so bad that it made people sick. So I, I was just not someone public did public speaking. And as I got more passionate about this, it let me get over that fear. And I love the things you brought. I've been to conservatory every time you've taught it. And it's been like I've learned something deep every time. Now it's like, oh, I can be of service to people. I can share this information that I think will help people. And that's way more important than me being a little scared and I can get out there and share with people. So I think there's so much, so much good juice hidden away from in, inside so many people that, and our world needs the good information. It needs the, the hope, it needs the inspiration. It needs to, to know that there's glimmers of hope at the end of the struggle. Um, and I love how you're able to help people access that sometimes in very goofy, silly ways, but like you do, you break through a lot of the walls and help people um, connect with what they want to share with the world. Well, and, and thank you, Kathy. Um, and this is also like to just talk to educators and workshop leaders, like, like here's the meta piece of this, right? Like as nerds, if you can throw a little bit of your nerd superpower at business and marketing and and it's almost like with sex education like like let's talk about these words they're not dirty right and it's like business and marketing so many of us have shame and probably some fucked up trauma about like how do you run a business but the thing that changed everything for me personally was it's just teaching mm -hmm. and and if you can tap into what's fun for you about teaching, everything starts to change a little bit. Um, and so like you getting courageous enough to tell parts of your story, or it could be a client's, you know, success story. If you, if you really need to keep your private life private, um, but like you being able to tell your story, um, and share how it impacted you for real um, and then teach people what you did to shift that. All that is, is teaching. And like we talk about at Sex Geek Summer Camp, like good marketing is really just teaching. And if you love to teach, then just teach and then do a live or make a Instagram story or something like that. And as long as you can stand in teaching and helping people. And with an invitation at the end, you have to invite yeah. them. Well, and that's the thing, like, like, but your that call to action, that's where a lot of other educators get fucked up is because now we're like, huh, I don't want to be salesy. Yeah. And the way to re align that is if you really have advice that will help people, and you give them the option to not sign up for the course. And maybe you even teach them how to know that this isn't the course for them. Yeah. Then what you're helping model is that this is how we do this and not be pressuring people. 
and let people know, like with even with conservatory, like if you want to come work on public speaking and get comfortable with microphones and talking to the camera while you're also talking to the audience and making all this more fun for you, then come. And if not, great. Like, thank you for taking care of yourself. And you can do that and not have to be manipulative about it. Um, but you need to get okay with making that invitation in the same way that you're, you're teaching other people to get okay with and do the emotional work to make the invitation to ask for what they want in bed or ask for what they want in relationships. Um, and if you don't come to conservatory, that's fine. Um, but hopefully like even just knowing some of these mistakes will help you judo flip what you're doing and start to realize, Oh, like I need to talk about myself in congruent appropriate ways. So my audience can connect with me and get the help that they, that they need for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And if you do, if you are interested in conservatory, I think Reed put the link down below. Mm -hmm. um, he'll be teaching a lot of amazing things and lots of practice. And I'll be helping people, guiding people to find the story that's unique and helping them tune it in. So um, if you want, if you want assistance doing this, so you can avoid all the mistakes, we're, we'd love to have you help you. Check out uh, sexgeekconservatory.com. I'll put the link in the, in the comments. Uh, share this video with friends. Um, Kathy, as somebody who was on your first YouTube video all those years ago, how many years ago now? Uh, it was 2012, May of 2012. I did my first video and I hid in the corner and someone complained that you were taking up the screen. And I was like, he wasn't taking up the screen. I was hiding. <laughs> I was trying to pull Kathy on. Uh, how many YouTube videos have you now, uh, uh have out in the public? Uh, there's over a thousand videos out there now. And mm -hmm. how many YouTube? How many YouTube views? Uh, I think it's uh, five and a half million. Uh huh. So. And how many standing ovations have you gotten, either at Body Storytelling or at Jeff Walker's uh, product launch formula? Maybe ten. Hmm. Oh, that's we've come a long way yeah. from hiding yeah. in the corner to yeah. now having seven hundred just... people there, you know, you know cheering yeah. for what I said. Um, I do think that if you can. And one of the things I think is a standing ovation is not necessarily the, I said something that was super amazing, but I helped them connect with themselves, their own inspiration mm -hmm. and the story can do that. And that's really what I want for, if you're listening to this, I hope that this helped connect you with a little bit of your own inspiration because the world does need you. What you share matters. And your story is a way to connect that to people in a way that nothing else will. They will remember your story far longer than they'll remember do X, Y, Z. So mm -hmm. I hope that helps you. Great. Thanks for making time for My us pleasure. today, Kathy. My pleasure. All right, everyone, check out the links, leave some comments, share, and then I'll see you in a couple of weeks, Kathy. Yeah, that's fine. I just can't wait. Bye.